Hello everybody, we are Lost Canada today and um, welcome to Zara here and uh, can you present a bit of yourself? Hi, my name is Zara, I'm from Vancouver, BC and I'm here with the Ubik Rocketry team. Um, I work mainly on our fins and on specifically analysis and I am so excited to be here, so thank you for having me. Yeah, welcome. So we're, we're very excited to have you too. Uh, so you're a team member, so when did all this begin? Well, my joining of the team was in September of last year. Um, I had just began university in engineering. I was very nervous, and I thought I needed an extracurricular, so rocketry seemed like the path. Um, we've been working on the Andural 2 for about a year now. It is our second iteration in the Andural series. Um, Andural 1 was launched here successfully last year, and we built upon that design. Our recovery and payload systems are very similar. Um, we've changed our fuselage a bit. We used a carbon fiber fuselage in the past. This year it's aluminum. Um, yeah, it's been about a year of hard work, iteration, and yeah, I'm happy it's finally paid off. Nice. So the, your rocket is uh, going into the pad right now? Yep. And uh, how many are, are on your team? Um, I believe we have about, I believe the number is 54 members. Uh, here at Launch Canada, we have nine. So it's all prepared, all battery charged up? Yeah, um, we've just been doing our final checks this morning, but it looks like everything is good to go, so very, very exciting. Dude, the first, uh, first one we're going to announce today, and uh, we may have a, a drone footage bit, maybe, uh, to see. Oh, yeah. So this is the team. Um, so I'm gonna thanks again all uh, the guys that are behind the camera to make this stream working and uh, steady and uh, um, and we thanks also Alec our drone operator uh, and uh, the guys behind the camera so they're gonna film all that. So they are with the rocket installing it. So yeah. Yeah, you can see the vehicle moving into the launching zone. Oh, yeah. We're just in the Audi in front. I think you can see our team captain, Julian, and Zoe Follister, who's going to be our structures lead next year. Nice. That's very exciting. So, you yeah, have any fun facts about uh, how you designed that bucket? Or... Yeah, so I, I know a lot about our fin cam specifically. Um, that's, in my opinion, a very special part. It is 3D printed from aluminum, which is a first time using that technique for our team. And it's a very new and emerging technique, but that was a long design cycle. We have a member, um, Jack Truskett, I think he spent 300 hours catting for that part. Wow, um, that's a lot. Yeah, but we're really, really excited to see how that goes. Um, definitely had a lot of iterations of this design. And you, know, you can take a look, like I've seen sketches from September, November, that are so different from what it is today. So I'm happy that we're, we've been able to improve that much. Yeah, so a lot of in, 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 uh, iterations and uh, a lot of work put into that. Uh, so uh, what about the, the fuselage? Do you have any fun facts that uh, get you thinking that like going well but didn't well, end well and you change your design for two? Yeah, absolutely. Um, our fuselage, honestly, every part of this rocket has definitely been a bit of a wild ride. So our fuselage <laughs> is machined aluminum. Um, I was the one who picked up the stock from Vancouver, actually. Um, but we had some problems because the stock quality wasn't perfect. 
So we actually had to adjust our machining. Also, another issue we have with our fuselage was that we, we machined it on a lathe to get, you know, a good outer finish, and then we machined the mating yeah. pieces. Hey, nice. Um, and it was an inch too long to fit on our lathe, so oh. we ended up having to cut it in half. So you kept an inch uh, from the entire rocket, or do you have a space there? Well, how did you end uh, resolving this issue? Uh, so because we couldn't fit the entire thing on the lathe, we cut it in half at a certain point and put a bonded coupler into it. Okay. And then we machined both of those halves separately. So now you have a two stage, two two, uh, two rocket uh, assembled, and you go on a hole together into the air. Yeah, exactly. So what's the maximum velocity you are um, attempting uh, right now? We're looking for about Mach 1.9. So a supersonic rocket. That's cool. Yes, very cool. Um, this is our our second, uh, hopefully second successful supersonic rocket for the team. Our first was the Andro one. So I wish you to have a successful flight. Uh, thank you. We have uh, clear skies here, uh, not that much wind, so it's going to be a nice launch with great views. Uh, I hope we're gonna have that, uh, catch that on camera and a uh, few pics uh, we're gonna have uh, from the launch. And uh, I wish I'll show you a nice recovery because uh, super sneak recovery are not that, <laughs> that very uh, successful sometimes. Oh, yeah. but, um, well, we're from BC, so we love hiking. Yeah, of course. <laughs> love mountain out there. So, do you know uh, how your timeline is working? Like, uh, do you have uh, an hour timeline or? An hour, like how long? To leave? Yeah. When, when you arrive to Pad, do you have uh, any uh, things to uh, click or do on the rocket? Yeah, so we have a checklist. The main one for, as I mentioned, I worked on the fins and our fins are aluminum, so they are very sharp. So for the fins, we have uh, covers that we put on them to yeah. stop any potential. Don't forget to get the protection out yes. <laughs> to have a nice fence in the air. So then. <laughs> when we were measuring our center of gravity, we forgot to take them off and we realized that was a problem because it was about 10 centimeters off from where it should be. Oh, for, for a rocket that this size, pretty, uh, pretty decent um, margin error then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, our weight is obviously very considered. Everything is built. So if you are building your own rocket, don't forget to... <laughs> And to the protection before measuring the center of gravity, then. Absolutely. <laughs> That's a good reminder. So, what, what if you, so you have protection removal? Uh, do you have uh, other checks to do? Yeah, so we have an, our avionic system. We have our um, telemetry, so that all has to be turned on. Um, our recovery system is actually in our, is just right below. Um, in the area in the fuselage in which it sits, we have to activate our screw switches. So we have black powder charges that will be um, set off to pop the nose cone off of the rocket and deploy our drogue at Apogee. Um, so when it's time to do that, the screw switches have to be activated so that they can pop off. Very important. Nice. So you are all done. Pull around the GNC. The what uh, what do you have? Do uh, you have any uh, more steps or? Uh, let's see. We have screw switches. We have the thin covers, obviously. Um, honestly, I'm not sure. I wasn't part of the team. There's plenty on going down there. Yeah, I don't. Well, we, well, um, maybe uh, one of the, the other members of the team is gonna pass by. Uh, so we can. That's your rocket. Yeah, that is my rocket right there. That looks like. Oh, nice. Yeah, and we're so they're putting in the ramp. And you can see the fin covers are still on. Yes. Protect your fingers, please. Another consideration we have to have with our launch lugs is that because our fin can has a very thin outer wall, we didn't want the weight of the rocket to be sitting on the fin. So we have a special device that's put on the launch rail to stop it from sliding all the way down. That's a nice thought. So... We you have some little uh, thingies in T shape to um, go in the rail. Mm -hmm. So they're going to align that and uh, push it through the rail carefully without cutting any fingers, hopefully. Well, you can see right now, uh, Julian has his hand on the fin. He would not be doing that if we didn't have the cover on there. Yeah, that's uh, 